Um, I think the, the actual properties of rubies are unique in that they, they really do attract the eye. And you have red being at one end of our visible spectrum, blue at the other end of the visible spectrum, and then of course green in the middle. And those, ironically, represent the three most important gemstones in our business. Uh, so you've got ruby, sapphire, and emerald. And there's got to be a reason for that, that humans have that range of color within their visible spectrum, and that's it. We don't really see UV or infrared, but those do impact the way that we, that we maybe see these stones. And so that gets into the next part of ruby that I think is important, and that because of the high chromium, low iron content in ruby, when any UV light hits it, it glows. And so I think there's a, a subconscious attraction to ruby that I don't think we get yet. And it's this energy. There's a vibrational energy obviously coming off of that because we're seeing, we're seeing this glow. And you clearly see it when you put it under a UV light in a dark room. So I think that all these things combined uh, and the desire for it are, are what, what create this demand for ruby that, and its scarcity. Um, even when we've had great large quantities of, of material found, you know, like in Mongshu, Burma, uh, had to be heated in order to become that color that people wanted, but it still had all those same characteristics. Even when that happens, the ruby prices may drop a little bit, but then they come right back. And, you know, you have a new locality like in Tanzania, suddenly you have these incredible reds that just are so exciting and initially the prices are at a certain point and then they go up, they go up, go up and they, and they quickly have gone up to $25,000, dollars $45,000 a carat. They're not quite at the level of Burma but as more people start to understand how beautiful they are then those stones too will, will reach a certain pinnacle that will, that will approach Burmese stones.